dark sectors that extend the, the standard model structure. Um, and in principle, this dark sector can be as rich as the standard model one with many extra fields. So for example, in the standard model, we already have the quartz, the lepton, the gauge Boston, the Higgs doublet, etc. And in principle, in the dark sector, we can have um, also many fields. And the content of the dark sector depend on, on the specific assumptions uh, to build um, the corresponding theory. Uh, one possibility, for example, is extended the uh, standard model with one extra force that only is, um, is developed in the dark sector. This can be done through a dark photon if the neutral, if the standard model fields are neutral under the new abelian symmetry or through what set prime if the abelian, if the standard model fields are also charred under the new symmetry. In general, then this abelian symmetry uh, can be imposed to be local uh, to keep the same um, assumption than the standard model. And in addition, we can also assume that there is, if there is new fields there, like new fermions, all these new fermions um, are also chiral, like in the standard model. So they get the, their masses from some uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking mechanisms. For example, here this uh, field that is a Dirac field with two components acquires masses after the breaking of the new abelian symmetry uh, because of the expectation value of the singlet scala. Uh, the mass of the new fermion then is proportional to the vacuum expectation value of the singlet scala. In general, um, this implies that the uh, new fields uh, impose a new anomaly condition. And in, in general, we need a set of new singlet scalars or chiral, sorry, a new set of chiral fermions uh, in order that to have um, the anomaly cancellation properly account for. Uh, in this sense, in, in general, we will expect that the dark sector uh, have many extra chiral fermions, like in the standard model. In addition uh, to this, this can imply that the, the presence of uh, several dark matter candidates, what is called multi-component dark matter. <clears throat> and in addition, in this specific world, we can have extra interaction that only occurs in the dark sector. For example, in this case, the single scala is uh, inner, so this kind of Yukawa interaction only happens in the dark sector. This is important, for example, for baryogenesis because we can impose that the corresponding Yukawa is complex, and we can use this to uh, implement baryogenesis more in, in, in a more easy, easy way. And you have a, an extra Gosson boson, right? One extra, yes, uh, gate boson associated mean? with the abelian symmetry that is uh, associated to this new tensor, the mu nu, that mm -hmm. is either a dark photon or a set prime, for example. Um, in the case of, of, of the set prime theories, for example, uh, we have a strong limits from the LHC, either from the production or the decay. So uh, in general, in this setup, we have uh, one extra abelian symmetry. In this specific case, I, I am interested in abelian symmetry that uh, have a lepton or baryon gauge symmetry. Uh, so in, in that case, um, one of the sectors, for example, the red one is, um, is different from zero and the other sector, the blue one, is uh, zero or vice versa. We can have the quartz uh, neutral and the lepton sector chart. Uh, one implication of, in general, of this model is that the, uh, neutral, the, the Higgs doublet need to be neutral under the new symmetry. 
uh, in order to achieve uh, this kind of symmetries with only one sector chart, uh, it is necessary to at least include a, a doublet and a singlet that have non-zero hypercharts like this one here. Uh, the minimal content is one extra exotic uh, doublet fermion with uh, the corresponding right and, and left component and one extra, let's say, uh, right-handed electron, exotic right-handed electron that also have uh, obviously a non-zero hypercharts. This is the minimal content in order to have and the baryon or lepton symmetry. Uh, in, in our model, in addition, we consider the singlet scalar associated to the spontaneous symmetry breaking of the symmetry. And in addition, we also include one inner scalar related to baryogenesis. Um, to avoid, um, to, uh, to specify further the model, uh, we also need to explain neutrino masses. Uh, we choose in this word to explain the neutrino masses through direct neutrino masses. Um, and we want to explain the smallness of neutrino masses. So for right-handed uh, neutrinos with direct masses, in principle, uh, the Yukawa terms similar to the up, upward masses is in, princip in principle present but uh, if we allow this directly, the um, couplings are small. So in order to explain, we can avoid the three-level contribution and only allow the uh, appearance of the corresponding non-renormalizable operator and some power different from zero. Um, this kind of, uh, of uh, of effective operators uh, generate effective direct neutrino masses with one explanation of the smallest of the kids. So um, this, this condition to have this kind of effective direct mass operator implies uh, one specific requirement for the chart of the scalar singlet that, br that braces spontaneously the symmetry. So the, this is a scalar singlet is automatically related uh, to, the, to the chart of the uh, right-handed neutrinos and the chart of the lepton doublets. Uh, so in this setup, uh, we need to impose, impose the condition for anomaly cancellation. There are several conditions, one that are linear in the abelian symmetry, uh, there, this, uh, this is our three conditions that allow us to express three standard model charts in, in terms of the other two. So we choose uh, to, to choose these charges to be the ones of the quartz sector and express them in terms of the lepton sector. Uh, after that, we have one anomaly that is uh, quadratic in the abil new abelian charges. Uh, this anomaly condition uh, imply, in principle, a new condition on the free charges. Note that if we, if, if we didn't include it, the exotic fermion with non-zero hypercharge, uh, this condition could be automatically satisfied because this is zero, so it is automatically satisfied if, and there is no further restriction. Uh, it is, the prediction here is that uh, whenever you have a, a sector that is charged, for example, the quartz sector, automatically the lepton sector is also charged. So it is not possible to have a baryon or gay or baryon or lepton symmetry in that case. Ha however, if we have this X prime and X double prime charges different from zero, so this new exotic fermion with uh, non-zero hypercharge, uh, we can use this freedom to uh, choose this anomaly to cancel through the lepton sector. Uh, so the E is no longer a free parameter, and the only free parameter uh, from the standard model chart is the, left, the chart of the lepton doublet. So we have this relation here, and it's very straightforward to have, for example, a gaze baryon symmetry. 
the, the condition is, in that case, is that the lepton doublet is, the chart of the lepton doublet is zero, automatically the right-handed chart is also zero, and the quark masses are different from zero. In the contrary, we can have also a lepton symmetry if we impose that the red charts are zero. However, this imposes additional condition more uh, difficult to satisfy. In either way, we still have uh, two anomalies to cancel out. Uh, the one, or another one that is linear in the in the hyperchart that only depends of the in, on the charges of the standard model singlets. Uh, and other one that is cubic in the new charges. So this uh, give to arise two set of equation, one linear in the new charges and one cu cubic. Uh, the the um, important thing about to let these two anomaly equations unsolved is that the problem to solve these two different equations is already very well known and uh, there are a lot of solutions that, can, that are known to these two equations. Okay? And this can be used to explore possible realization of uh, gaze, uh, gaze variant and lepton uh, abelian model. Uh, in our case, for example, uh, these uh, conditions are associated with the exotic per fermions and the chiral uh, new singlet fermions uh, of the model. Uh, from this, we can have one relation between Q and the lepton doublets, and one condition to have the, uh, the abelian symmetry universal as that is that one of the integers in the solution need to be repeated three times, and one of the charges need to be interpreted as the corresponding chart of the lepton generation, and is the same for the three ones because of the universality. So, uh, with this kind of uh, condition, we can already use the known solution for these two equations uh, that are integer solution that can have a uh, four from five to, uh, for example, 12 integers. And this, the, obviously the upper limit is just a, a limit from uh, the computation ability to find the solution. Uh, we already have this data set uh, from five to 11, and this account for already uh, 40,000 solutions. A solution is, for example, uh, this one from here, this set of uh, no trivial integers, one, five, minus seven, minus eight, nine. If you, use, if you add these numbers, they add to zero. And if you sum the cubic, the cube of these numbers also up to zero. So this is a solution of these two equations, and so on and so forth for the other 40,000 solutions. So from this um, starting point, we need to to check uh, the condition to have, for example, a viable model for baryon number. Until, until this work, the specific um, studies about, for example, baryon number uh, gate symmetries was done specific for the specific solutions. So uh, now, one of the new things about our work is that we can use um, we can study all the possible uh, models in a systematic way. So we start, for example, for these 4,000 possibilities and start to select the uh, integer solutions that uh, satisfies all our conditions. For example, the solution of integer, phi phi minus three minus two, one minus six. Uh, we need to use the solution for a baryon gate symmetry. So the lepton number is zero. This is warranted because uh, this neither of these charges will be used directly to uh, define charts of the standard model particle. So the effective uh, neutrino mass turns impose a, a prediction for the singlet scalar um, for the chart of the singlet scalar that the, in this case need to be minus five. This is because we need to at least two repeater charges to have masses for two Dirac neutrinos. So the solution uh, need to have at least two repeater charges. 
we, and with this, we, we can explain um, all the observable re related with neutrino physics. So this first condition uh, with two repeated charges fix the charge of the singlet scalar associated with the spontaneous symmetry breaking. Once we have this singlet scalar, uh, we need to check that the fermions, uh, the extra fermions in the solution acquires proper masses. So for example, we can choose these two integers one and minus e to uh, be associated with the uh, exotic uh, doublet uh, fermions. So they need to acquire um, vector-like masses after the spontaneous symmetry breaking through this kind of Yukawa couplings. Um, and this is compatible with the uh, choose char two minus five for phi. So with this coupling and these uh, charges, we already have this allowed term. So uh, all the uh, exotic fermion acquire masses uh, throughout this mechanism. Uh, if we choose the X and the double prime charges in this way. Uh, the other two integers, minus three and minus two here are also used. They are used uh, also in the dark sector to define a Dirac fermion dark matter candidate. Uh, they have the proper charges, minus three and minus two, in order to be coupled to the phi. Obviously, this is, these conditions are no, are no straightforward to satisfy. Either way, there, there is a lot of solution from the starting point of the 4,000 uh, set of solution, we already have around 1,000 that satisfies all our condition. Uh, our solution here, uh, this specific solution uh, is in this point with two fermions, one um, associated in this case to the per, to the exotic no hypercharge non-zero hypercharge sector, and another fermion associated with the dark matter candidate. But in general, we can have a multi-component dark matter with Majorana and Dirac um, uh, candidates. And also we can have multiple, multiple generation of dark matter particles. So uh, in general, this kind of solution are associated with a very rich dark sector. However, we will focus in this very simple solution where uh, each pile of integer is associated to a very specific set of particles. Uh, so in, uh, we already um, guaranteed that the neutrinos can acquire Dirac neutrino masses. Uh, so any realization of the effective operator that doesn't affect the anomaly cancellation in principle can be built. Uh, for example, there is, there is this new topology that is called the Darcy uh, symmetry topology where the um, uh, internal fermions in the loop are belongs to the dark sector. So this is also one scotogenic uh, model. Uh, so we, we, we choose to realize the effective uh, neutrino mass operator in this way, in order to have also the dark sector uh, associated uh, to the neutrino masses. Uh, in this case, uh, in order to have the, the loop really um, closer, we need to add a new singlet scalars in this topology. Uh, the charges of these of the singlet scalars, charge singlet scalar, is very easy to fix with the corresponding Kirchhoff load because we have one sprite charge uh, flowing in, in the loop and another uh, associated charge uh, related to the neutrino. So for example, in this vertex, we have a one C prime entering and these two fermions going out. So this fix the chart of the C prime. Similarly, uh, the, the chart of the um, singlet scalar is at, was already fixed. So with this, we can have finally the model in which we have the standard model fields, including the his doublet, uh, the extra exotic uh, non-zero hypercharge fermions required to have a consistent gate variant number and a full set of uh, new singlet fermions that are necessary to cancel out the anomaly. Two of them, the ones with the repeated charges, are chosen to be the right-handed neutrinos, and the other two are chosen to be the dark matter candidate. 
So every particle here plays a role. In particle, uh, these exotic uh, fermions uh, participate in the scotogenic uh, generation of the effective Dirac neutrino masses. Uh, in blue, we have the internal fermions here. In red, the right handed neutrinos of the Dirac neutrino masses. Yeah, and the green, one of the uh, scalar, char scalar, and in blue, the other one that have the same charges of the exotic fermions. Uh, in addition, we also include one singlet scalar associated to baryogenesis. So this is our model, is one baryon number model, is the simple one, uh, I guess, in the literature until now, uh, in which uh, we can explain at least uh, the generation of small neutrino masses and the presence of the dark matter. Uh, for example, through this uh, Dirac, Dirac, Dirac uh, fermion dark matter candidate. So in addition, in this kind of scenario, in principle, we have the ingredient also to explain baryogenesis. Uh, the usual approach to explain baryogenesis in the standard model is not possible because of the, the Higgs mass is too heavy to have one uh, sufficiently strong um, phase transition. And uh, if we try to implement baryogenesis beyond the standard model, uh, the typical problem is that the source of the set of violation are usually associated to couplings with the standard model fields, like for example, in supersymmetry or even in the to his doublet model. So in this kind of baryogenesis scenario, there are very strong constraints from too large electric dipole moment that uh, almost exclude this kind of model to explain baryogenesis. For example, supersymmetry is already excluded to explain uh, low energy baryogenesis. So we can escape this and constraints to build and beyond the standard model with variable agency if we use the dark sector uh, to accomplish um, the two important ingredients for biogenesis. The first one is having one strong electroweak phase transition. This can be easily um, uh, accommodated if we in impose the presence on one new inner standard model scalar singlet. This couples with the his doublet and as we will see, uh, the phase transition is, is, can be affected. And the other half, in order to avoid the constraint from electric dipole moments, uh, we can induce new Yukawa coupling that only happens in the dark sector. And, uh, if we can build some mechanisms to, to transport the um, asymmetry created in the dark sector into the standard model sector, in principle, we could have the uh, corresponding asymmetry uh, translated into body, uh, baryon asymmetry. So the idea here is to include a new Yukawa term that is complex. Uh, this is already done in this work by Karena and collaborators, where they use one, a very specific lepton gaze model or a very specific baryon gaze no model uh, with no explanation for the smallness of the neutrinos here, the, in particular in the lepton gaze no, uh, model, uh, the neutrinos are Dirac, but uh, with the masses acquired at the level, so the Yukawa terms here related to the neutrino masses are very small at the level of 10 to minus 12. There is no explanation for the smallness of neutrino masses here in this work. Uh, they obviously have anomaly cancellation with a very specific uh, solution. Um, they have these three level Dira neutrino and they, they use, the, they decouple the extra exotic um, fermions, the ones that have non-zero hypercharge from the spectrum at the electroweak scale, and they call these anomalous. This is important in order to have this current of head prime sufficiently strong to um, transport the asymmetry created in the dark sector to the, the visible sector. 
So the ingredients are there. They, they choose the lepton or baryon gay symmetry because the usual, for example, you want dimeno cell have very strong constraint from the LAC. Here is, are the constraint from Atlas uh, that go upper this line. So uh, when we choose this kind of uh, new abelian symmetry, this kind of limits can be avoided. Uh, we use the same kind of philosophy of the lepton and variant number. In particular, in this talk, I will focus in this variant number that I already did. Uh, uh, this is was just an illustration of anomaly ca cancellation. The method to to find the forty thousand solution allows to define many other possibilities. Uh, we still have anomalous that also belong to a very rich dark sector with multi-component dark matter. And uh, the final ingredient is that we also try to explain the smallness of neutrino masses through a uh, scotogenic uh, mechanism, for in this case, for Dirac neutrinos. <clears throat> so the original idea of Karen and collaborator is to have the CP violation in the dark sector through one Yukawa coupling and transfer the, this um, asymmetry to the standard model sector through the anomalous coupling with the step prime. In addition, in the dark sector, we also assume the existence of an inner singlet scalar that allows a very strong first order phase transition. Uh, with these two ingredients, uh, the baryogenesis mechanism can be um, can be obtained. Uh, the baryogenesis itself, um, then in this kind of model, uh, is transmitted through new set prime gaze uh, coupling that need, need to be anomalous. So the idea is to have one a, a set of higher scale fields, uh, the singlet. Uh, responsible for the symmetry breaking, the exotic fermions, every, uh, all of them are a very high scale. So on, at the electro V scale, we only end up with the set prime set that we, we need to be low enough. Uh, and this for, for the reason this, that this cannot be, for example, one, one B minus cell um, extension, because this is already very constrained for the LAC. Uh, we need also this uh, inner singlet scalar, and, uh, and it's very important the presence, the presence of a Dirac uh, fermion dark matter candidate, because this uh, Dirac fermion can have a coupling with the inner singlet scalar, and this coupling uh, can be assumed to be complex. So this is, will be the source of the CP violation. Uh, so in addition to our, the, um, our mass for the Dira fermion, we have a dynamic mass uh, associated with the, this new interaction that is very important for the CP violation asymmetrification. Uh, the, the, this asymmetrification in the dark sector need, need to be translated to the standard model, and this is done through the set prime and his anomalous coupling because this uh, other fields are already decoupled. <clears throat> and one important, the important term for the strong electrowave phase transition is the coupling of the Higgs doublet with the neo inner Higgs scalar that also need to be complex in order to have the Yukawa complex. Uh, there is a one a very well known techniques to work out the effective potential to a uh, high different from zero temperature. Uh, this allowed to study the dynamics of the phase transition, in particular the dynamics of the bubble creation. Here, the, this yellow region represents the, the wall of the bubble. Uh, so inside the bubble, the uh, standard model Higgs is half a zero vacuum and the symmetry is, is exact. And in the other side of the, of the bubble, the standard model symmetry is broken. And the contrary happens with the singlet scalar. So this singlet inner scalar in the uh, high, high energy limit acquires a dynamic uh, singlet uh, sing, uh, is, is different from zero is a vacuum expectation value that is very important for the strong phase transition. 
So the dynamic is basically that we have two minimums, uh, for example, for temperature larger than the critical temperature. Uh, one of the minimums is associated with the singlet scalar, uh, the, what the component associated with the standard model is, in, with the direction of the standard model, model is always zero. And we have a different from zero value for the uh, minimum associated with the standard model that is, that is called here one. So uh, B, the standard model Higgs, has a different uh, value from different from zero value here at this minimum, and also the singlet scalar Higgs. At the critical temperature, the two minimums are degenerate, and below the critical temperature, uh, we need to guarantee that the singlet scalar has a zero vacuum expectation value, as shown here, while the standard model Higgs acquired the very well-known value uh, that we need for our phenomenology. This is already very well studied in, in several papers by Spinoza and collaborators in this formalism of the effective potential. Uh, this is done in the approximation of of the direction of the very thin bubble. And from here, uh, we need to calculate basically the nucleation temperature. And with this nucleation temperature, we can define this Euclidean axiom. This Euclidean axiom is very important to uh, the Boltzmann equation in order to calculate really the uh, generation of the CP violation. The violation is proportional to this coupling lambda that is associated with the Yukawa coupling that is complex and uh, is required to the proper generation of the symmetry. Uh, with this, we can calculate the set prime background uh, and we, when this background is different from zero because of the anomalous current, we can generate uh, one chemical potential for the quarks. Uh, and this chemical potential is the, the source for the um, asymmetry in the thermal equilibrium of the quarks. So basically, uh, conceptually, the idea is that the set prime is sufficiently light um, in some way that this can mediate long range forces that extend into the region outside the bubble wall. So connect the uh, broken and unbroken uh, symmetry electroweak phases. Uh, with this, we can uh, um, calculate the num num number variant of from the, the, the real asymmetry, and this asymmetry, eta b, need to be in one in very specific range to explain the observations. Uh, so we already implemented everything uh, in very well-known high energy physics tools, we have the Abelian model implemented in SARA. With this, we can generate one Fortran code uh, called SPENO. And with this, the output of SPENO, we can calculate the properties of the dark sector through micromegas. We have also one specific code to calculate the baryon asymmetry also in the in the corresponding Python notebook where we made the scan. We tried to make these um, notebooks reproducible um, and self-contained. So uh, the idea with the scan is that we vary the parameter related to the effective potential uh, in order to have proper nucleation temperatures. Um, and to reach the values of the proper asymmetry. Uh, and these need to be combi combined with all the other constraints from the several parts of the phenomenology. Uh, this is the range used in the effective potential. And with this, uh, in combination with the other constraints, we have our final uh, result. Here, uh, we have the set prime that ranges from a few GBs until several thousand. Um, we scanned the points in blue, the, and the points in blue satisfy the proper dark matter relic density and are compatible with all the neutrino observable. These are the blue points. Uh, 
in addition, we also scan the effective parameters um, in the same that I explained before to also check the proper um, baryon asymmetry and also the constraint from direct detection. So the points that pass this additional constraint are, are fully compatible with all the, these um, restrictions are the black ones. Uh, so the black ones uh, have this kind of well, um, well expected behavior. Upon, the, upon this, we need to also check uh, additional terminological constraints. In our case, for example, we have a um, baryon um, abelian symmetry that still allows the production of set prime at the LHC, but the decays of this set prime are only through the jets instead of the usual decays of the set prime into the leptons. So the constraints are uh, rather are rather weak than the other ones, but still uh, we have some constraint and, and this corresponds to the re, re, uh, red region here, the digit constraint from the set prime at the LAC. In addition, we have uh, another constraint in general from uh, flavor uh, observables uh, that exclude all this uh, region from here. Uh, and maybe the strongest um, constraint here is from uh, cosmology. Uh, by assuming a standard cosmology, so uh, and because we have Dirac neutrinos, in principle we have six degrees of freedom instead of, of the three associated with Majorana neutrinos. And in principle, give these extra degrees of freedom can thermalize in the early universe, they can account as extra relativistic degrees of freedom in the early universe until this, at least. So uh, this imposes very strong constraints uh, in this kind of model because the set prime is coupled directly to the Dirac neutrinos. And this is all, all this green region that goes down uh, whenever we increase the vacuum expectation value of the singlet scalar field. That in this plot of the coupling at the set prime appear appears as uh, these straight lines. So this line here is for vacuum expectation value around 100 GB. Uh, and if we go here, uh, we reach here around seven uh, TV that, uh, that are already excluded by this cosmological constraint. But uh, still we have, for example, this um, open parameter space between seven TV and for example, 20 TV where in principle of these black points satisfy, satisfies everything, including this kind of cosmological constraint. Uh, so any of this model uh, is able to explain uh, a small neutrino masses, dark matter through the, this fermion dark matter candidate compatible with uh, direct, constra direct detection constraints and finally, the black point are also able to explain the proper asymmetry of the antimatter in the universe through this baryogenesis mechanism. Um, so this is the end of the talk. Here I have the conclusion. We, are, we have presented one abelian baryon gauge group. Uh, in which we have electroweak scale fermion vector light doublets that are chiral but one higher uh, at one higher scale and also is a singlet charged singlet. Uh, in principle, they can be uh, can be produced at the LAC. Uh, in addition to this exotic fermion, we also have right-handed neutrinos with repeated abelian charges that allow us to explain a small uh, data neutrino masses throughout the dirac darcy mechanism. Uh, there are another standard model singlet. Uh, in this case, two of them can explain the dark matter of the universe by forming a dirac uh, dark matter 
fermion. This dilatar matter fermion uh, can also couple to a, a inner singlet, and this is the source of the CFE violation in the dark sector. Uh, because of this scalar singlet, we can also have a, a one strong fixed order electro weak phase transition. So the CP, CP violation created in the dark sector can be transferred to the um, um, visible sector through the interaction with the light anomaly of Z prime. Um, with these ingredients, we can explain these three phenomenological problems on the standard model that are the more important ones. Uh, and thank you. If there is any questions. Thank you very much, Diego, for a very nice and complete talk. There are questions from the audience. <coughs> I have a question. Claudio, please. You have a question? Yes. Uh, hola, Diego. Hola. hola. Um, very nice talk. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, in, in a place you, you put... Um, this uh, effective operator, I think, for the masses of the fermions, that was a non-renormalizable operator, you know, like it had a, like a phi over lambda or something, right? To to some delta power. Um, what is the there? Yeah, what, what is the lambda scale in, in your case here? Yes, this is, could be the scale of the spontaneous symmetry breaking and the. Um, uh, and the scale of the exotic uh, the, the exotic uh, fermions, doublet and char singlet. This could be, for example, phi TV, let's say. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. This is right. associated with the vacuum expectation value that we need to put very high in order to be compatible with cosmology. So, yeah, for example, here you have this. Uh, uh, the wave of the phi to 20 TV. So in, in this case, this lambda should be uh, a little bit above that or something, but? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Understand. Another question from the audience? Yes. Uh, Alfonso? <clears throat> no, I, I think Ivan is first. No, no, Ivan? that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Diego, for a very nice uh, talk. Um, in the model you have, uh, when the, the Z prime is light, uh, it can mediate, as you said in the conclusions, a long range force. Uh, uh, this uh, this long range force is, is compatible with with uh, searches uh, from with, with experiment with search deviation from Newton's law of gravity. Newton's law of gravity. <laughs> oh, what the question? Is how long? Range. Mm -hmm. Okay, I keep here. Um, long range is uh, longer than the usual set prime. I mean, the usual set exactly. prime, the reference one is the U1 B minus L. So the. Massive anyway. Uh -huh. So uh, it is a still <laughs> a very short distance. For example, this could, could be. Okay. Associated to displaced vertex at the LAC. Okay. Not, no much of that. Maybe centimeters or even meters, but no very far, far away from that. So yeah, because, because uh, the current limit from for deviation of the Newton law uh, is about. 10 to the minus six meters, I think. So, well, most probably, prob probably for the masses around uh, MEV, uh, the, the, the range would be less than that. Mm -hmm. But the, this, yeah, it, it, this is a fit force, it's not related with the standard model interactions. 
Okay. This one is trying um, gates interaction, not, relate, not directly related with um, the standard model interaction and even less with gravity. Okay, thank you. So the constraint of this kind of uh, forces uh, are mainly from, from the LAC, like here, um, from uh, flavor constraints, like mesom decay, GSI, and, and et cetera. Okay. Ivan has a question. A couple of things. When the first thing is uh, whether a lepton number is also violated, right? The lepton number no is is conserved here because okay. the neutrinos are Dirac. Yes. Yeah, that, that was exactly my, my question. I mean, uh -huh. the, the global lepton number is conserved here and protected by the, the gate symmetry. Yeah, then B minus L is, is uh, violated and uh, in general, that's supposed to be a very good symmetry in this. Um, the, the other thing is uh, about the uh, uh, so constraints from uh, from uh, electroweak precision tests like G minus two and other things. I mean, there should be some constraint, especially for, for the C prime that you have over there. Uh, G minus two. And... I, I know this is a, doesn't couple to fermion. The C prime doesn't couple to fermions. I mean, that's a. Only to the quarks, the say prime. Yeah, that that so it should be a, to the to the quarks. The G minus two should be a small effect probably because that's after couple to to fermions. Yeah. What, what I have seen is that in general in this model with a fit force we can accommodate the parameter. To leptons, I mean that's a couple to leptons. Uh -huh. Yes, no couple to leptons. So there is no expected lepton flavor observable like. Mm -hmm. Like AMA or G minus two, no. Okay, thank you. More question from the audience. I had a comment and a question in, uh, I think this, uh, the char is sort of let on double the, you Diego were showing in the diagram, uh, maybe they can give contribution to J minus two in the neutrino diagram. I mean, yes, because, oh no, maybe no, no, I'm not sure. no, no maybe there is, no, I don't know if there is, uh, ah, but if one, if, if one made this diagram repeated, duplicated, ah, but this, no, the, there is no master for new lie. No, it seems that there is no contribution to J minus two. At least, uh, maybe it's negligible, or I am missing something. Uh, I mean, there is a beyond standard model contribution to G minus two? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I guess that to have G minus two, you have you need to have the other alternative, that is a lepton gaze number model. For example, uh, there is a paper of Ma, but uh, where he studied the other possibility, a lepton uh, gaze model in which he is able to explain G minus two. But in this case, the coupling of the, um, of the of this particle are through the, directly through the quarks. So the, the implication in G minus two are not so straightforward. Mm, see, maybe it's a very solid effect, negligible. Yeah. Um, the reason why you, among the, the, you got about 400,000 solutions for the U1 assignment, you choose one with various number because motivated by addressing electroweak phase transition. Or there were another reason, there was another reason for that. Okay, the, the main reason is that um, to choose to really choose uh, the other possibility to have a lepton number symmetry, we need to impose another condition. So the possibility to have F solution there are not granted. 
Uh, so we left this for another work. Uh, however, in, in, the, in the case of the baryon gauge symmetry, uh, we already know that we have a lot of possibilities. But for the other one, uh, we, we needed to check that the extra condition can pass uh, all can select some solution. And, and at that point, it was not clear that if, if it was the case. Uh, finally, maybe it's one kind of, uh, it's, um, well, okay, we are working now in this other possibility and we were uh, able to find one solution from the 4,000 that satisfies everything. So what we were kind of lucky, have some kind of lucky to find one, one solution. Very nice. Mm -hmm. More questions from the audience? If not, we, we send the speaker, we send Diego Lastrepo for the very nice talk. Thanks a lot, Diego. Thank you very much. Um, and see, see you all for the next seminar. Um, thanks a lot, we send a lot the speaker. And have a nice afternoon. Thanks, Diego. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Thanks a lot, Diego. Bye. Nice Bye. afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.